Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in. This is Faith Fuel Devotionals. My name is Pastor Dustin. Vision Baptist Church in Riley, Indiana is our church, and we're so glad you've tuned in to take a few minutes to get some encouragement. Let's get right down to it. Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 are what's called the Sermon on the Mount, and we have been going verse by verse through it, section by section, seeing what we can learn. Last episode, we started chapter 6, and we talked about how important it is in the act of worship to give biblically. Don't sound a trumpet. Don't ring a bell. Don't say, look at me. Give in private, and God will bless you in public. Very important. He kind of continues the thought in Matthew chapter number 6, verses 5, all the way down to 13, I believe it is. Uh, what is a section on prayer? All the way down to verse 15. If you have your Bible, open it up. Just pause me for a second. Get your Bible open it up. I want you to see today, and then we will continue. Uh, Matthew 5, 6, 7, and 8 give us kind of an introduction to prayer, and then Matthew 9 through 15 talk about what is called the Lord's Prayer, or what I like to refer to as the model prayer. And when we get into verse 5 and 6, which we're going to focus on today, here's, here's what he's really trying to get across when it comes to praying. Don't be a hypocrite. Beware of hypocritical prayer. Just like he was talking about beware of hypocritical giving in verses 1, 2, 3, and 4 of chapter 6, the same here is in 5 and 6. So let me read verse 5 and 6. It says, When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, Enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. Thy Father which is in, which seeth thee in secret shall reward thee openly. Very similar to what we saw in the last episode. So here we're talking about beware of hypocritical prayer. Or another thing that you could look at this, we're talking about the location of prayer. Where should we pray? Now notice verse 5 here, we see this public consideration. Jesus is not saying here it's wrong to pray in public. That's not what he's saying at all. In fact, if you read what Paul says to Timothy about prayer, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, he says, I would therefore that men pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands, men should pray everywhere. So it's not about, oh, that you're not supposed to go out in public and pray. No, you should. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, pray without seeking or ceasing. You should pray everywhere, publicly, uh, privately, uh, around other people, uh, all by yourself. There's all sorts of places to pray. So he is asking here, when you pray in public, what is your motive what are you trying to accomplish when you pray in public? Is it to get a hold of God and get something from the Lord or to worship God? Or is it to worship yourself or to get attention of somebody else? The word hypocrite, which we see here in verse number five, is a word we are all familiar with, not just because we do it, but because we, are, we see it a lot. The word means an actor. The world is full of actors. You've watched movies, you've watched TV shows. And people play a part. People that uh, are not who they are normally, they pretend to be somebody totally different. That's fine and good if you want to be an actor. That's good and fine if you want to be in the drama department. Good for you. But when it comes to prayer, don't be an actor. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't try to play a part or win the show or win a Grammy or an Oscar. Uh, don't try to impress anybody but God when you pray. The hypocrites he's referring to here specifically in verse number five are the Pharisees. And the people of the day were very aware of the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the religious class. They were the teachers that were involved in Judaism at the time. That's what they referred to them as. Uh, they were rabbis. They were a specific sect or group of, of rabbis that believed a certain thing. So just so you know, there were certain teachers then that tried to impress with their prayers. Jesus said of them in Matthew 23, 14, Woe unto you, scribes, which were the writers of the law, and Pharisees, the teachers of the law, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for your penance, outward showing, make a long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive a greater damnation. See, he says, you prayed for the wrong reasons with the wrong motive. There is something wrong with that. Do you do that when you pray? Are you praying with the right motive? What is 
the prayer motive of the hypocrite. Well, according to verse 5, it is he wants to be seen of men. He wants people to be impressed with him. He cares more about the approval of men rather than the approval of God. He wants the handshakes. He wants the pat on the back. He wants the applause. Man, you can think of somebody, you know, doing that truly. Would they do that? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. The word verily in verse number five, verily I say unto you, they have their reward, their reward means truly. And all they have is the praise of men. And that will buy you nothing in this world. Can I remind you that the pride can, that pride can show itself in rotten ways and also in religious ways? Both are repulsive to God. What do I mean? Well, there's the nasty, filthy, corrupt sin that we're all familiar with. The lying, the stealing, the sexual perversion, the atrocities that people can perform. That's the rottenness of sin. And pride causes that. But pride also causes religious sin. Sometimes people pray in ways that have improper motives. And they're not getting anything from God because he's repulsed by it. Proverbs 16, 18 said, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs eleven two says, When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. So when you pray, there needs to be a public consideration. Verse 5, And also when you pray, in order to avoid hypocrisy, there should be a private closet. That's what he's talking about in verse 6. Jesus is suggesting two thoughts. To pray in public is pointless if you don't pray in private. And the way you properly pray in public is to first learn how to pray in private. In the synagogues and the greeting markets are not the place to learn how to pray, Jesus is saying, in your private closet. Now notice it says here in verse 6, but thou, when thou prayest. I love that because he's, gonna, he's showing and implying that people at some point will pray. You will be brought to your knees by life in some form or fashion. Maybe you're going through something right now. Maybe you're dealing with something and God is bringing you to prayer. God has a way of doing that. It doesn't say if you pray. It says when you pray. Because we all are going to come to a point of prayer. Even the atheist, when he is scared, he will resort to prayer. Why is that? Because we know it to be true and we know it to help us. It's important to unburden our hearts to God. Now notice the word closet here, which literally means a secret room, a chamber, or a storehouse. In fact, if you were to read Luke chapter 12, verse 24, the word closet there is translated storehouse, which is a place of a barn. And so uh, it doesn't necessarily mean the place where your shoes and your clothes lie. It doesn't mean literally go into your closet. It means... Find a secret place, a private place, uh, and do your business with God. Jesus did this very often. Mark chapter 1, verse 35, he rose up early in the morning, and he went and departed to a solitary place to pray. He didn't have a closet in a, room, in a house, in a room, but he went to a place all by himself. Luke 6, 12 talks about it. Luke, Mark, uh, Matthew 14, 23, Jesus had solitary places to pray. This is very important. Jesus teaches us when you pray in private, the Lord will reward you in public. In fact, Matthew 7, 7, in the next chapter of the Sermon on the Mount, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you publicly. So there's a little bit of a warning I want to give you when it comes to this as well. It is possible to pray privately and pray with the wrong motives. It is. Just because you're in a closet doesn't mean you're going to pray right. You can still ask amiss, and it will negatively affect your prayer life. Your motive still matters even there. And we often hear question uh, here, how is your prayer life, About uh, and ask that question. But how about, how is your personal prayer life? I think that's better asked. How, do, how are you doing when it comes to praying personally? And privately. Most times, the only times we pray are public prayers. We pray before we eat a meal. We pray in church when the pastor or somebody calls on us. But how are we doing privately when we pray? When we pray? Uh, you may have to work to get time alone, but you should do it. You may have to schedule it on your planner, but you should do it. You may have to work with your spouse or your loved ones to find a time but it's worth it if you do it. It will energize you. It will build your faith. 
It will fight off discouragement. It will relieve stress. It will relieve anxiety if you pray properly. Beware of hypocritical prayer. So I ask you, as I ask myself, how's your prayer life? How are you doing? Do you need to take time today? Let this be a reminder. Let's take time to pray. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. We'll see you next time.